Greetings, MathPack Southeast team. Captain Jorge Quadros, your commanding officer, accompanied by our executive officer, Captain Tom Bistavka, our business director, Mr. Jeff Killian, and our senior enlisted advisor, Senior Chief Jason Fletcher. I would personally thank you for all the sacrifices that your new families make every day for your country. Your sacrifice has made all the greater as we maintain a remarkable high operational tempo during the worldwide COVID-19 pandemic. We are very proud to serve with you. While the vast majority of our Navy, active duty and civilian does the right thing every day, it only takes the misconduct of a few to risk eroding trust in our shipmates and our Navy. Extremist behavior is contrary to our Navy values and harms us all. I know that all of you get this. A very small percentage do not understand its importance or are not following their moral compass. We must have a culture where this is part of who we are and we act accordingly. We expect all military service members and DON civilian employees to be guided in their actions by a professional ethic that prioritizes the team, the mission, and the nation. You are essential to our success and we need you on our team. Never forget that being on our team is an honor and a privilege. You serve one of the most respected institutions in America and that comes with added responsibilities and obligations. You are held to a higher professional standard and must set the example in all that you say and do. Many of you serve in positions of trust with access to classified information or serve in sensitive positions. All of you are expected to do the right thing, to look after each other and to work together to overcome whatever challenges the mission presents. Prohibitive discrimination of any kind, for any reason, violates the Navy core values and will not be tolerated within our ranks. Leadership is about creating an environment that encourages open communication from the headquarters to shops to divisional workspaces. On February 5th, 2021, Secretary of Defense Austin released a memo to address extremism in the ranks of our military components. His memo highlights were, we took an oath to obey the law, support and defend the Constitution. Without question, the vast majority of the men and women of this department serve with honor and uphold our core values. Service in the DOD is a privilege that comes with added responsibilities and obligations. We will not tolerate actions that go against the fundamental principles of the oath we share, including actions associated with extremist ideologies. Secretary of Defense Austin also released a video and leadership stand down framework. Additional highlights include the vast majority of the men and women in the United States military and those who serve the Department of Defense as civilian employees perform their duties and responsibilities with integrity and do not support racially and ethnically motivated violent extremists, including white supremacists and other domestic terrorists such as anti-government violent extremists. However, recent events have shown that we must be ever vigilant in our efforts to identify and combat such ideology within the ranks and organizations. We have a duty to reject. Service members and DOD civilian employees must reject participation in such activities. With regard to service members, department policy makes clear that commanders have the authority to employ the full range of administrative and disciplinary actions, including involuntary separation, dismissal, or even appropriate criminal prosecution against those who actively engage in such activity. Supervisors and leaders of all ranks must also take action to maintain good order and discipline and root out extremism. Recruitment. Extremist organizations and individuals often target current or former military members or DOD civilian employees for recruitment because of their unique military skills, knowledge, and abilities, as well as to gain legitimacy for their cause. Service members and DOD civilian employees must be vigilant of these efforts. Hello everyone, I'm Lloyd Austin, 
Secretary of Defense. I want to thank you for participating in this stand down, and I thank your leadership for supporting this important initiative. And let me say right at the outset that there is not a single doubt in my mind that you take seriously your oath to the Constitution, and that you serve this country with honor and dignity and character, and that you believe in and uphold our core values each and every day. Many of you have deployed in harm's way to defend those values, and some of you are in harm's way at this very moment. And I want you to know that I'm grateful for that. I also want you to know that your fellow citizens are grateful for that. You see, we understand the sacrifices that you and your families are making to defend this nation. And we know a stand down like this can seem like yet another task to undertake, another burden. But the truth of the matter is, we need your help. I'm talking, of course, about extremism and extremist ideology. Views and conduct that run counter to everything that we believe in, and which can actually tear at the fabric of who we are as an institution. You know, I've seen this before. I've lived through it as a soldier and as a commander. It's not new to our country, and sadly, it's not new to our military. What is new is the speed and the pervasiveness with which extremist ideology can spread today, thanks to social media and the aggressive and organized and emboldened attitude that many of these hate groups and their sympathizers are now applying to their recruitment and to their operations. You know, it concerns me to think that anyone wearing the uniform of a soldier or a sailor, an airman, marine, or a guardian, or coast guardsman would espouse these sorts of beliefs, let alone act on them. But they do. Some of them still do. We've got to be better than that. And not just for ourselves and the sort of work environment that we want to cultivate for each other, but also for the country and the very idea of what the United States represents to the world. And that's the discussion that I want you to have today. I want you to revisit the oath that you took when you joined the military and when you re-enlisted or got promoted. Read those words again. Consider what they really mean. And think about the promise that you made to yourselves and to your teammates and to your fellow citizens. I also want you to share with your leadership your own personal experiences with encountering extremist and extremist ideology in the military, should you have any. And I want your leadership to listen to those stories. And I want them to listen to any ideas that you might have to help us stamp out of the ranks the dangerous conduct that this ideology inspires. And so, I want you to remember also that we've got important things to do, ladies and gentlemen. We have serious commitments around the world, and people depend on us. So we can't afford actions and behavior that are at odds with our values and that undermine good order and discipline that harm or harass and otherwise violate the oath that we share and the bonds of trust upon which we all rely. Again, thank you for what you and your families do each and every day. Thank you for upholding your oath and thank you for helping us get smarter about dealing with this very important readiness issue. I'm proud to be on your team. Teammates, the Chief of Naval Operations recently put out a memo to the entire Department of the Navy on extremism that I will read now. 
Shipmates, I am certain the vast majority of men and women in the United States Navy serve with honor, character, and integrity. But we cannot be under any illusions that extremist behaviors do not exist in our Navy. Just in the past few weeks, there have been two separate incidents where symbols of hate and violence were anonymously left in living areas aboard ships in our fleet. The chain of command took both those incidences seriously and immediately launched investigations, which are ongoing. But there is more we must do together because these symbols are contrary to our Navy culture, core values, and warfighting effectiveness. As directed by the Secretary of Defense and across the fleet, each command will conduct a stand down by April 6, 2021 to address the extremism within our ranks. We must better understand the scope of the problem, get after the issue, and eliminate conduct that is driven by extremist beliefs. No doubt this is a leadership issue. We will own this. As a Navy uniform and civilian active and reserve, we cannot tolerate extremist behavior of any kind and must engage in open and honest conversations with each other and take action. Leaders at all levels must lead by example. You must set the tone. You must model correct behavior 24-7, 365, in person and online. We also have had a responsibility to educate and inspire those in the Navy, those coming into the fleet and those leaving our service. That extremist behavior is unacceptable. Hate and extremist ideology are wedges that divide us. These actions stoke resentment and tear others down. That's the opposite of how we will treat each other as shipmates. We build each other up, we encourage each other, and we celebrate our shipmates' success. If we don't eliminate extremist behaviors from our Navy, then racism, injustice, indignity, and disrespect will grow and continue to keep us from reaching our potential. An inclusive, respectful, professional fighting force that answers the nation's call. If we must first question the intentions of our shipmate standing to watch with us, now and especially when taking fire, we will fail when the nation needs us most in combat. Some sailors may think their voices do not matter right now or feel frustrated, seeking to be seen and be heard, but let me be clear, each of your voices matter. This stand down is another in our efforts to listen, to learn, and to improve. Now is the time for us to come together and be guided by a strong, moral compass. We must eliminate extremist behavior and its corrosive effects on our fighting force. And we must remember that we swore an oath to support and defend the Constitution above all else. Today and every day, our Navy must be a shining example of an organization centered on respect, inclusive of all. Simply put, we must demand of each other that we treat everyone with dignity and respect. That is how we would become a stronger Navy. Today we take a stand. Today each of us as sailors and leaders will commit to eliminating extremist behavior. We are all linked by our desire to serve and the bond that was created when we took our oath of office or enlistment. Whether it was our first oath at a military entrance processing station in our home state or our last oath while re-enlisting, the meaning and commitment has not changed. The oath of office enlistment to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies foreign and domestic. Consider these specific constitutional provisions that we support and defend. Everyone is entitled to equal protection of the laws. This means government, including the Navy, cannot discriminate on the basis of race, creed, color, religion, sex, including gender identity, national origin, or sexual orientation. Everyone possesses the First Amendment rights of free exercise of religion, freedom of speech, and peaceful assembly. However, these important rights are not unlimited in their protections. Speech that incites violence or criminal activity that threatens to undermine our government and constitution is not protected by the First Amendment. While not subject to military law, DON civilians must refrain from speech that qualifies as true threats, speech that incites imminent lawless action or immediate breach of peace or otherwise violates DON equal employment opportunity policy. Vandalizing government property and storming a police barrier is not an exercise of First Amendment rights. 
Similarly, speech in the workplace that interferes with the mission, supports extremists, or discriminatory doctrine, or is disrespectful and harmful to colleagues, will have consequences. Understanding that we support and defend the Constitution of the United States, not a supervisor, political appointee, or a person occupying a political office. Our oath has no expiration date. The oath we pledged is much bigger than ourselves. As a symbolic recommitment to obey the law, support and defend the Constitution, and do our job to the best of our ability, I invite you to join me in reaffirming the oath of office or enlistment. Attention to the oath. All enlisted sailors, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me according to regulation in the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So help me God. Hot ten, hot. All officers and DON civilians, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. To solemnly swear or affirm that I'll support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I'll bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I'm about to enter. So help me God. Shortly, we will disperse into small group breakout discussions to discuss the challenge before us. But before we do, I want to take a moment to highlight your duty to report suspected or actual extremist behavior and the ways that you can accomplish that duty. In our small group sessions, you will talk more specifically about what constitutes extremist behaviors. Early identification is key to prevention. Some indicators of individual escalation toward extremism include clear identification with or support for extremist or hate-based ideology, making or attempting to make contact with extremist groups, the possession and or distribution of extremist literature or paraphernalia, and threatening, intimidating, harassing, or harming of others consistent with extremism or hate-based ideology. While such conduct may not constitute active participation, such signs offer an indicator for commands, prompting action and intervention that can avoid active participation down the road. You can inform your chain of command, talk to the simio, and file a formal or informal complaint. The contact information for our command simio is provided here. Talk to the DON Insider Threat Program Office, contact EEO Office for DON civilian personnel, contact NCIS or local law enforcement. The NCIS tip line can be anonymous, but please be specific and you can access that at ncis.navy.mil. Thanks for your participation, and I challenge you to have honest and open discussions in your small group breakout sessions. Every voice matters, and your feedback is essential to the success of this stand down and the policies that drive positive change in this subject for you and the sailors that follow your footsteps in the future.